Okay, folks, after all of that hardcore stuff, this is going to be fun. First of all, I'd like you to know that Playfair, a guy by the name of John Playfair, rewrote Hutton's theory of geology back in around 1800. So he's responsible for all of this fun we're having in the resource business. Because prior to John Playfair, no one knew what geology was. The only other uh, rendition of the earth was the Bible. So my partner in, in uh, this business, Neil Briggs, a, a, a geologist of some renown, found a mine already, uh, decided that Playfair was an appropriate name for our efforts as we went forward with this company. Now we had this company for some time, I think it's about 20 some odd years. We did it as a favor for a friend. He wanted somebody he could trust to take care of it. We ended up with it, so we've been babysitting it for 20 years, and all the stock that we have, we ended up buying over a period of time through debt settlements and whatever. So whatever skin you put in the game, we're there with you. In 2013, we decided we had an opportunity in Ireland. So Neil Briggs knew a man by the name of Rick Parker from 35, 40 years ago when he was with Falconbridge. So Neil started to chase down Rick Parker with the idea that we would do a deal to revitalize Playfair. Playfair had made a bet on tungsten. It did not work out. We were a 120 million share company. So when Neil got a hold of, of Rick, we decided to go for this play in Ireland that Rick had, had produced over the last couple of years. He'd, he'd certainly sold us a bill of goods that we couldn't refuse. So we, we consolidated our, our Playfair on a basis of one for 10. Then I beat the bushes and raised $375 from a bunch of mining people I knew, mainly in Toronto. That gave us the seed stock to get into this play in Ireland. Well, it was easy enough to get in, but it was difficult through 2014, 2015, things were so bad. One of our shareholders lent us the money to stay in the game. 2015 was over, and finally, this year, we got a breather. So in the last four months, I've been able to raise $1,285,000, and finally, we can tackle this project. And this project, incidentally, is truly grassroots. You will not, in your lifetime, likely hear a presentation that's any more grassroots than this. This starts as an idea up at the Delradian property in, in uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, Delradian had a, a project called the Curry Gnome. And I don't know if any of you have followed it, but it's currently around five million ounces. Well, going back six and a half years ago, it wasn't quite that big. Andy and Rick, uh, Andy Bowden and Rick Parker got together and said, look it, this thing's turning out pretty good. They're both serious geologists. They're, they're, they're really uh, well educated and, and experienced. Uh, we have a little club for our company. We call it the SEPTA club. You have to be septagenarian in order to join. So you don't have to be in a rush to join us, but we're all there. <laughs> so um, once, once we got going with, um, with the idea of rolling the stock back, raising the money, um, surviving until this year, unfortunately, um, I've left out a piece of the puzzle as to how Rick and Andy ended up deciding that they would want to be there in, at, at Curano. There's a, a structure that starts off in Scotland, and it runs down through the North Sea and through Ireland and on into the Atlantic, and it actually ends up over where you are in Newfoundland. So that structure has splays off it. When I say a splay, it's a fault off a fault. And Curano, with its now five million ounces, sits in one of these splays, and it has a lot of characteristics similar to other splays. Kavanagh is another deposit. It sits on a splay on the same major fault. So Andy and Rick looked at this and said, look, where else in Ireland can we find this? And the answer was the Ox Mountains in the Republic of Ireland. So they moved down there. They took out 16 uh, prospecting claims covering roughly 700 square kilometers. And over a period of a couple of years, they prospected. Well, you might say, how do you prospect in Ireland? You drag in your car and you drive along and you look at fences. And particularly pretty rocks that sit that people put on top of the fences are usually the ones that have a bit of color in them, whatever you stop, you look, and you get to know what the geology is just generally through the area. And that's what they did for a couple of years. Well, finally, they came across a spot, not on the fence, but it was in a creek bed, and you wouldn't believe where these guys were. It's up this valley and up this creek, 
and they find a boulder and it looks good, they ask it 9.8 grams. And that's, after all that effort, that was good. You know, that's considered good. And they took a picture of that rock and coincidentally, it was that picture of that rock that sold me on the idea when we eventually made our deal. So they continued to work for a bit, they found some more float around in a place called Clunacool. And then through the regional uh, uh, prospecting, they came with a second place called Cabra. Well, Cabra turns out has a, a series of, uh, of float, uh, the highest being 33 and a half grams. At Clunacool, they found float as high as 17.4 grams. Well, at that point, they were, they were strapped. They were carrying this thing for a long time, and they finally made the deal with us guys. They had tried with somebody else a year before, it didn't work out, and finally we made the deal with Playfair. So we, we supported them, and we continued. They, they eventually found a vein, one vein that ran uh, six and a half grams when they, when they uh, did their own assays across a half a meter, and it was a pretty scrawny looking thing, but it, nonetheless, it was gold in place. So from that point on, they started to do some geochem and some geophysics. The, the, the geophysics, we kind of soft pedal it because it was actually done by the government. And it was a mag -EM survey of the whole district. So lo and behold, on this geophysics, in the vicinity of these clusters, these two clusters of, of gold that they had found by prospecting, there's a structure that shows across the, you know, just in the vicinity of both of these clusters. So the interpretation became, this must be the representation of the structure that we're looking for, similar to what you have up at Curignon and at Kavanaugh and at Conanish. And incidentally, Conanish is in Scotland. And Rick Parker, who is one, one of the founders here, had actually found that deposit back in the 1980s and has been put in production by a group from Australia right now called Scott Gold. So all of a sudden, the market turns. We get some money. What are we going to do? Well, there's only one thing to do and that's to get at the project and start drilling. So now, if I can learn how to use this, Gwen. Just press that one. Okay, so how do we know? Uh, incidentally, I have a philosophy about these things. Whatever is in the ground, we cannot change. So whatever our fate is in this wonderful project in Ireland, it doesn't matter what you and I do, it ain't gonna change. It's been there for hundreds of millions of years. But, in terms of finding out what that puzzle is, we've got some great guys. Uh, Gwen described the team as having 100 years of experience. She was really being kind. <laughs> okay, really, it's over 150 years. And just in those three guys, and if you throw me in the mix, just if you throw me in the mix, we can quit the big numbers, we can go back to just two centuries. So with all this experience, I truly believe whatever our fate is in Ireland, these men will figure it out for us. These men will lead us you know, uh, to whatever it is. I've watched them banter back and forth. They all have ideas. They all have their own prejudices. And if you're sitting in a room with three geologists, do you know how many uh, opinions you have? If it's less than six, it's good. <laughs> so. This very first rock, right there, that was the start of our journey, okay? It doesn't look like much, but I was brought up in Red Lake, I spent time in Kirkland Lake, and I've seen these rocks, and to me, it just looked like a good rock. It, it's, it looks like a good home for gold. And, and this rock runs 9.8 grams. This was the very first one they found. This is what kicked this whole thing off. So, let me come back to a few points here. We can see here, is that the pointer? Yeah. The big structure running down, displays off at uh, Currino, Cavanacol, oh, and then incidentally, Cabra and Clunacool. Now you'll notice something. Conanish, Currino, Cavanaugh, Cabra, Clunacool, all start with a C. And this one does down here too, but I can't pronounce it. So this, we consider this as an important part of the of the good luck that we're building in Ireland. Okay. One minute. Okay. What's next? Okay, here's our, here's our scrawny little vein that we started out with. 
This is what a happy prospector looks like when he's got a piece of rock in his hand and he thinks he's going to, be, uh, going to run. And these men have an eye for this rock. Rick has an eye. He, he can pick the rock out and he says, this should be good. This should be. And, and this is from experience, from his long experience. Okay, this is what gets me excited. 33 and a half grams in this boulder and it's proximal to the structure that we can see geophysically at Cabral. Okay, I've only got this one map to show the, the, uh, the big structure here, you can see the big red line across the top. You can see all those other dots. They're, they're samples either uh, that were found in place or there's a couple that are in place and, and the rest are float. So what we've done, we've decided to start on that vein. We put our drill on the vein, we put two holes into the vein at station one. And then the philosophy is we're following the vein, oops, how do I go backwards? Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, we're following the vein from here up towards the structure. And the idea was, we know there's gold in the vein, but we don't know what's in the structure. We don't have a clue what that structure is when we start. So as we've progressed, we went north in about 45 degrees to the west, just following the vein. We know the vein's dipping at 45 degrees. The first one, the first section looks good. The second section looks better. The third section looks better yet, and lo and behold, we not only see the vein, but what we've recognized is that the vein is an alteration. So this is different than Curignon. Curignon has no, no alteration around it. So as we've progressed northward, we're now into the, what we perceive to be the structure, and we're seeing further alteration. But we don't have any assays. The rock looks good. It looks like a good home for what we're looking for. So I, all I can say is stay tuned. We're going to finish our, we're going to finish our, uh, whoop. <laughs> we're going to finish our program with this drill. And uh, everything that is going to decide Playfair's future is going to rest on these, these fences of holes we're putting across these structures. We're going to finish this fence at uh, Clinical. Then we're going to take the drill over to Cabra. We're going to do a fence there. Uh, in, in proximity to that high-grade boulder, hopefully all before Christmas. So by the, new, by the time New Year rolls around, you're going to know whether we're happy or sad or, or, or having a great Christmas or packing it in. We are most encouraged by what we've seen to date. Thank you very much for listening to me. Enjoy your rest of your weekend such as it is.